How do you see the direction of Afghan foreign policy changing or staying the course after last year's elections? Clearly, Afghanistan's foreign policy is changing. President Ghani, when he came to power, one of the first initiatives that he took was to establish a stronger and closer relationship with Pakistan. Um, the result of that, he paid a visit to Pakistan. Uh, he signed a memorandum of understanding. The Afghan government has signed a memorandum of understanding between the intelligence of the two governments on sharing uh, uh, information that they have uh, on, on the insurgency both in, the, in both countries. Um, he personally paid a, a visit to the Pakistani army's headquarters. Uh, the result of these uh, effort was uh, was the negotiation uh, the round the first round of negotiation that took place two weeks ago between the Afghan government and the Taliban uh, in Pakistan and uh, close to Islamabad. The second area that he has tried to do, uh, and and that is uh, what he has tried to do. He's tried to uh, to take an active foreign policy to the one that we had during the Karzai, which was reacting to events happening around the country. That's first. Secondly, he has tried to broaden the key stakeholders uh, involved in the Afghan conflict. Uh, he has tried to engage, for instance, the, the Chinese uh, to the uh, Afghanistan's uh, matter. He, the, the first visit that he paid uh, once coming to the power was to China, uh, and uh, he, so he tried to get uh, the Chinese involved to, uh, to this peace negotiation. Uh, so these are the two areas that we, send, we see changes in Afghanistan's foreign policy since Ghani coming to power. Can you assess these changes you described in terms of Afghanistan's regional role, and also in terms of neutrality versus alignment? Afghanistan has either remained neutral or has taken a proactive uh, role in aligning with a particular superpower or regional power. This is what we see in, in, uh, during the First and Second World War. The Afghans remained neutral during both wars. Despite the Ottomans' request in the, in the First World War to uh, be aligned with, with the Ottoman Empire, the Afghans refused. In the second round, the Germans asked the Afghans to get engaged in the war. The Afghans refused. Um, the rest, the country has tried to align itself with either a, a superpower or a regional power. Neither of these has worked to the benefit of the Afghans. Uh, when, when Afghanistan accepted neutrality, it was because uh, it was, the state was weak. It was isolated, so it naturally had no incentive uh, to align itself with any country, but to remain neutral. It was only when the Afghans tried to um, promote an active foreign policy that it tried, yeah, it tried to align itself with, with, with either superpowers or neighboring countries. The result of those hasn't been beneficial for, for, for Afghanistan because it's an isolated country. Um, it cannot afford neither to be uh, neutral or aligned. And getting that balance has been very difficult for Afghanistan. Um, to a large extent, that is to do, uh, these are like to do with external factors beyond Afghanistan's control. And that's had, that has been unfortunate for Afghanistan. Finally, if you forecast into the future and into the elections next year, what kinds of challenges or opportunities do you see for Afghanistan? Uh, two key events uh, are in the calendar for Afghanistan in the next two years. The first is the 2016, if it's held, parliamentary uh, elections. The second is the lawyer jirga to decide on the, f on the future role of uh, the executive officer, the current executive officer, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, uh, whether to institutionalize, formalize that process or not. Um, on the first one, the Afghan parliament, um, the president has elected a new election reform uh, commission that is tasked to, uh, to come up with a set of recommendations to the president. Uh, so that is a, a good sign that there has been initiatives taken by the Afghan government to reform the electoral system. Uh, but what is remaining, and I think this is something that we need to address, is, uh, is whether this 
committee would have the legitimacy to come up with a set of recommendations that would include conflict resolutions. And over the last 14 years, what we see, and this was the latest challenge that we faced in 2014 presidential election, was there was no dispute resolution mechanism in place. And a dispute resolution mechanism that is Afghan-owned and Afghan-led. So we desperately need that in order to make sure that uh, whether the, 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 the process of election is legitimate or not, uh, whether it's fraudulent or not, but what matters is that we have a mechanism that could resolve the dispute, and especially something that is legit, uh, legitimately acceptable by the large population of Afghanistan. The second issue is the Loy Jirga. At the moment, with the current rating that the President Ghani uh, is, is having, it's difficult to see him uh, uh, being able to manage the Loy Jirga, the, the content of, the dis of discussion in the Loy Jirga. Secondly, currently, uh, the Dr. Abdullah Abdullah enjoys a 50-50% power sharing uh, mechanism where he is actually appointing the key ministries and governors and so forth. Having the Loy Jorga does not mean that he will have the, he would enjoy the 50%. If he, let's assume he takes a prime ministerial position, it doesn't mean that he would have the power of appointing uh, ministers and governors. So, in fact, it is not to the advantage of Dr. Abdullah. It is not to the advantage of Ghani, given that he doesn't have the, uh, the, the approving, uh, approval rating uh, currently in the country. So both, there are a lot of questions around whether the Loi Jirga will be held and whether it would be to the interest of both parties. That raises another question, and that is, Organizing a lawyer jirga is a complex process. It requires a lot of effort. It requires a lot of management. Do they have the management? Do they have? Are they able to manage the process effectively, effectively to their interests? Whenever we had a lawyer jirga, it, successful lawyer jirgas held when we had a strong leaders, a strong rulers who could manage the process. But at this stage, given that both of these candidate uh, leaders have not appointed. Uh, the, the, uh, the key allies in the government and are facing opposition in parliament who will participate in the logica, who are facing opposition in the senate who will be participating in the logica, and are, the district governors are not aligned to them but their loyalty is to others, in particular to President Car uh, the former president Karzai. So we will see the, the winner in that process would be President Karzai, neither, neither Ghani nor Abdullah would be the winner. So w w there will be a lot of questions around as to whether that Loi Jaga would be effective in formalizing the position of, of uh, the CEO, and more importantly, how that would be managed to the benefit of both candidates, for both leaders.